Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model finite elements in STAT Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we're going to be focusing on modeling or applying loads to plate elements. We will now return our attention back to our sample model. Now at this point in our workflow, we're ready to start applying loads directly to the plate elements. To start this process, we'll go to our workflow page control area and select the loading tab. And you're going to notice that when you do that, the load and definition dialog is going to appear in the data area and the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar will become active. Now over in the load and definition dialog, I'm going to go ahead and expand my load case details and I'm going to notice that I have several primary load cases already established. Now in this first exercise, we're going to show you how to model individual plate loads and we're going to assign them through the live load category. So I'm going to highlight the live load type. We'll go ahead and click the Add button. And then in the Add New Load Items dialog, we are going to find our plate loads item. And if you want to apply an individual pressure or load to a plate, you're going to focus on these first four options. The first option is you can apply a pressure on a full plate, which will be used to define a pressure load that acts on the full surface of the plate element. You can apply a concentrated load that acts at a specific point within the boundary of an element. You can apply a partial plate pressure load to apply a uniform pressure load on the entire element or a portion of the element, and also a trapezoidal load, which would be basically a trapezoidally varying pressure load on a plate system. Now for this model, we're going to go ahead and use the pressure on full plate. Now what's nice about each of these options, we do have a graphic over in that dialog that will let you know what the different variables uh, are referencing. The first thing we're going to do is enter our load magnitude. I'm going to enter negative 0.05 kips per square foot. And then I need to specify the direction. Now for loads on plate elements, you can specify them according to the global coordinate system, which will be represented by GX, GY, and GZ or in reference to the local coordinate system. So we have the local X, the local Y, and the local Z. As a reminder, the local Z is always perpendicular to the plate element, and the direction of the positive local Z axis would dictate your assigned convention. We're going to go ahead and apply this load in the global Y direction. So we'll go ahead and click the Add button, and then we'll click Close. Now once we create this load, we then need to apply it to our model. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the load and then select the plates I want to assign it to. Now it's very often that a different view might help you make that selection a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to the View tab in my ribbon toolbar. I'm going to take a look at the elevation of the model. I'm going to go ahead and select all the plate elements at the roof. Now by default for this particular model, since it contains all plate elements, I already have my plate cursor turned on. If you didn't, if you needed to find your plate cursor, you can go to the Select tab in the ribbon toolbar and find it there. So once you've identified which plate elements this particular load is applicable to, we're going to go ahead and say Assign it to the selected plates, and then we'll click on the Assign button. Now you're going to notice that the graphic is going to change to let you know that that load is already assigned. Now in addition to wanting to add a concentrated load or a full pressure load, basically based on an individual plate element at a time, there may be times where you want to apply a load over a series of plate elements. And for this process, you can use hydrostatic plate loads. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by highlighting the load case that this is going to be applicable to. And then we'll click on our Add button. Again, we're going to return to our plate loads and we're going to find the hydrostatic option. Now this option is used to model loads due to hydrostatic pressure on one or more adjacent elevations. The hydrostatic load is converted to a trapezoidal loads on each element and the load is then applied over the entire area of the element. Now for this particular tool, this does require you to make a selection 
through the Add New Load Items dialog box. So we're going to go ahead and click Select Plates here. And then we're going to, in our main view, decide which elements this is applicable to. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of the walls of my system. And then we'll click Done. And we'll be returned back here. Now you're going to notice that once you make a selection for your plates, that now all the rest of the fields are going to become active. So now instead of identifying what the trapezoidal load is on each plate element as it goes up, you can go ahead and say what the minimum and maximum are, and it'll go ahead and interpolate that, that, those values or those trapezoidal loads between the starting and ending points. So I'm going to go ahead and say W1 is 0.08 kips per square foot. W2 will be 0.02 kips per square foot. We're going to interpolate along the global axis direction in the y direction and the load is going to be applied towards the local z axis. Now for this structure the local z axis for each plate element is pointing towards the center of the structure which will allow us to apply pressure or suction loads very easily. So once we're done we'll go ahead and click the add button and then we'll click close and then what we're going to notice is that the program automatically converted all of those loads to trapezoidal loads on each particular element. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.